Hi, everybody. Mr. Chan Bam here. Thanks for joining me today for this week's security news update. On the security and privacy alerts department, most companies, hopefully you, if you're listening to this, don't trust your internet provider to protect your corporate network. Uh, you have your own firewall, but your employees do, the ones that work from home. And, you know, who knows? You know, Cox Communications, this is sort of an interesting story. Cox Communications patched a bug that allowed people to bypass authentication and gave the threat actors the same permissions that their staff would have had. Uh, at that point, they could actually get ar arbitrary commands, even replace the firmware or whatever. You know, basically to own you, you know, your your employees' home networks. The bug was found by a security researcher, and the researcher told Cox about it. Cox released the patch. But it turns out the patch was not for the bug that the researchers found. It was for a different bug. Now, the researchers apparently originally found this bug about four years ago. Didn't really understand what it was. So maybe is you know hackers have been exploiting it. And if you remember about the uh, uh, what's it called the um, pumpkin eclipse attack from last week, you know that's a case of hackers getting in and and compromising six hundred thousand routers. So. You know, it, it, this is definitely possible. This is very real, I think. Um, you know, it obviously doesn't happen every day, but clearly it could happen. In the reference section, the EU Data Act is now in effect. It affects uh, companies that have a presence in Europe, meaning that you sell into Europe. It, there's a focus on connected products, which are all these, you know, things like Siri and Alexa and basically every connected refrigerator, connected DV, connected whatever. And there's a lot of rules. The definition of connected is very broad. It also affects the services that those services use. And uh, best I can tell, it probably requires you to disclose information that you might consider very proprietary, data structures and, and formats and data elements and stuff like that. I suspect that there's some companies that are going to say, Europe is not a big enough part of our business. We're just not going to sell in Europe anymore. They can deal with it themselves because A, it's going to be relatively expensive to go deal with it. And B, you know, if you screw up, the fines could be up to 4% of your revenue or 20 million euros, which, whichever is bigger. And, and a lot of companies just say not worth the risk. In the important issues section, Russia uh, may be escalating the war. There have been a number of uh, kinetic attacks in Europe, uh, warehouse fire in East London, railway derailments in Sweden. Uh, a big uh, shopping center fire in Warsaw, Poland. And experts are saying that they think this is right. They don't think this is like, you know, coincidental. There was also a uh, uh, a former, yeah, I don't know if anybody's ever a former Russian soldier, but a former Russian soldier who was arrested north of Paris after his, his hotel room exploded because he was making bombs there. You know, could this extend to the United States? Certainly possible. Uh, uh, I don't think uh, we're going to get a Christmas card from Putin this year. So, uh, you know, certainly he, he could certainly do that for sure. In the legislative and legal uh, department, uh, the UK is going to propose mandatory reporting for ransomware attacks. And and most uniquely, uh, you, uh, you're going to have to have a license in order to legally pay a ransom. That's kind of interesting. I'm assuming that uh, there's going to be a lot of companies that, who are not going to want to go off and seek a license so they can pay a ransom. It seems um, not terribly great, especially if the list of companies who, who are granted license becomes public. New York Attorney General sues uh, a crypto mining permit scheme. That's Novatech and AWS crypto mining. Uh, this is not Amazon's fault. They're suing two people that targeted people of Haitian descent, promising them financial freedom. The only people who got financial freedom were these two uh, clowns. The victims gave these fraudsters more than a billion dollars, and the couple fled to uh, Panama to avoid prosecution. Uh, don't know whether Panama plans to give them back. Mm, no telling. In the uh, education department, an update on the uh, pumpkin eclipse router fiasco from last week that I just talked about a minute ago. First, a correction. You know, I said that the routers belong to Lumen, a.k.a. Quest, CenturyLink, whatever you want to call them. Turns out the routers were not theirs. 
they uh, were the attack was discovered by them because they have a, a you know security operations uh, business. But it, it appears that the uh, ISP who is affected is Windstream. Windstream is kind of a, a mid tier provider. They're not really admitting it, but but you know some folks in the telecommunications industry are saying you know maybe these six hundred thousand routers were part of some kind of big botnet. And maybe they told Windstream about the problem, Windstream ignored it. Or maybe they went to the manufacturer and said these routers were compromised and the manufacturer ignored them. And so they came up with a brilliant idea, highly illegal, uh, to let's go let's go turn these 600,000 routers into a really expensive door stock. The interesting question, of course, that comes out of all this, besides that, all that, is it, where did Windstream or whoever it wound up being uh, come up with 600,000 routers to go replace the ones that failed? Now, in fairness, you know, some people are saying that, that their uh, service has been down for a long time, so maybe they're having a hard time finding 600,000 routers. Next, in the breaches department, uh, the Department of Justice uh, arrests the CFO of the far right wing media group Epic Times. I've often been wondering exactly what Epic Times' strategy is. Apparently, one of its main things is stealing money from everybody. Uh, but besides that, I, I couldn't quite figure out. They claim to be anti-Chinese communists, clearly seem to be pro-Trump, but then they do these anti-Trump articles. So I think I think their main goal is just to see the discontent. But anyway, they're uh, accused of, of uh, laundering about 70 million bucks uh, to the to the uh, CFOs and organizations benefit, and a bunch of people taking credit. The Southern District of New York, the Department of Labor, State Department, bunch of bunch of folks. So you know, I, I think he's in a world of hurt uh, legally. In the breaches department, the Los Angeles Unified School District is investigating a potential breach of 26 million records, which includes uh, students, teachers, and staff. The data is available for a thousand bucks. In fairness, the data is not super sensitive, but still not great to have it out there on, on the black market. Uh, next, uh, Frontier Communications, which which admitted, I think they admitted, certainly everybody knew they had a breach uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, at least the, uh, that far back. Um, they're warning about three quarters of a million customers that their information was it was exposed after a ransomware attack. Again, one more time, people say that they've been down since April because of lack of equipment. They, the Frontier did say that there's no financial information in, in the uh, breach information. That's good. Uh, but the challenge, of course, is you know, in the United States, in many places, you really only have one option for an internet provider. And if that one goes bye-bye, then you're kind of out of luck. Next, also in the breaches department, uh, I care management company Panorama uh, I care which is a kind of a service provider. They provide IT services and, and HR and, and payroll and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, they got hit by a, uh, a ransomware attack that affects 400,000 uh, customers. And, and you know, in today's world, you know, compared to things like Change Healthcare, well, 400,000 is small. But still, you know, uh, it, it's a decent-sized breach. And this one did uh, expose financial information. Next, and this is kind of a shot across the bow, in my opinion, uh, when they they uh, <laughs> came to, they made the, the United Healthcare's CEO testify to, in front of the Senate so they could flog him for doing all these bad things. Uh, one of the things that they kind of pointed out was that the CEO and board appointed an unqualified CISO. Uh, Chief Information Security Officer, the guy that they appointed in 2023, so last year, had never been a CISO before. And given the size of the company, that seems a bit odd. In addition to that, you know, he never even held uh, a security position, you know, any title like that in his 30 year career. He done a bunch of IT stuff and a bunch of marketing stuff, tech related, but, but never held a security position. So how this guy decided, they decided that they're going to go, you know, hitch their wagon to this guy's inexperienced, clearly inexperienced. You know, at this point, that's not a legal precedent, but I am sure that the lawyers are going to go off and kind of suggest that maybe that's part of the reason why they got hacked. 
uh, next the U- U.S. utility industry is is in a world of trouble. They're just being hacked significantly. There's been some highlighting publicly, uh, naming and shaming a bunch of water utilities for getting hacked, but they're no different than the electric utilities, gas utilities, wastewater utilities. And um, you know, I think these are gonna gonna keep going because these organizations do not have the expertise, don't have the money, don't have the inclination until they start getting whacked with really large fines or lawsuits. I mean, after all, you know, you don't have much of a choice. Uh, you know, uh, I don't like my water company. I, I don't trust them. I think I can get a different water company. That doesn't exist in the United States. Um, we shall see what happens with that, but I'm I'm not uh, optimistic that, that anything good is going to come out of that in the short term. Next, uh, the new CISA security attestation rules come into effect this week. Uh, these rules affect companies that are selling either commercial or custom software to the government. It requires them to, uh, the CEO to certify that they're following a whole variety of cybersecurity practices. They have to sign that every year. Um, you know, some CEOs will go off and roll the dice and figure CISA will never figure it out. And, but when they will figure it out is when you have an event. And then they're going to go back and look and say, oh, gee, uh, you said that you were doing this and this and this, and maybe you weren't. Uh, that brings up the the specter of the False Claims Act, which is the big club uh, that the government has to wield against you. And of course, you know, if you sign that and you have an employee who is upset with you, they can go to the government and say, uh, yeah, they signed this thing and they had lying through their teeth. None of that bodes well for companies that don't plan to get compliant. Uh, by the way, if you do need help getting compliant or even just understanding what the rules say, uh, and give us a holler. We'd be happy to help you. And then uh, last, the security news bites. You know, years, what, four years now? Five years? After Trump railed against TikTok and said it was a national security risk and all that stuff, now he decided, because it's convenient for his campaign, that he's actually going to join TikTok. Now, remember... You know, Congress also passed a law that would likely, if it actually happens, ban TikTok. Now, TikTok, TikTok has sued the government over this. But, you know, Biden is on TikTok. A number of U.S. senators and Congress critters are on TikTok. So, you know, it seems to me like, I mean, you know, if this really is a security risk, you, you shouldn't be doing that. But all that says is really all this nonsense about TikTok is really just, you know, pandering to the masses. He also promised now, uh, Trump, that is, that if he was reelected, he would never ban TikTok. Now, you know, doesn't necessarily have a great track record about keeping his promises, but but that's what he's saying now. Uh, next, it's hard to keep a, a good hacker down. Uh, breach forms, which the FBI took down a couple of weeks ago, has returned at a new domain. So, you know, that, that kind of points to how difficult it is for uh, the police to go off and and actually, you know, win in these attacks. Chat GPT, remember, got in trouble with Scarlett Johansson a week or two ago when they voiced a character that sounded suspiciously like her, even though they claimed it was not her. And it literally was not her because they tried to get her to voice the character and she wouldn't do it. But now they could voice the character. And you can just imagine the mischief that this is going to generate in terms of uh, people using AI to, you know, pretend they're your boss or pretend they're the police, or pretend they're some politician and put words in a politician's mouth that the politician never said, uh, or all kinds of mischief. We're never going to put this genie back in a bottle, but it's it's definitely going to represent a challenge. And for you know people who are low information individuals who you know do not critically think and say, well, gee, that person probably wouldn't say that. Let me, let me go kind of check my sources and see whether the people who don't do that are going to the ones who are going to be fooled. And, and I suspect, I mean, we've already seen uh, multiple examples of, of companies that have been swindled out of tens of millions of dollars by just this particular kind of attack, even before ChatGPT GPT announced it. Now it's going to be easy, trivial to go do it. You know, I suspect we're going to see a lot more of it. Uh, next, the FCC is taking what I would say are totally inadequate steps to protect the border gateway protocol. It's a uh, also known as the two napkin protocol based on the, the Cisco and Intel engineer uh, who invented it back in the 70s. And uh, 
uh, you know, they're taking a really small step. The problem is that China likes, there's no security of zero, zero, none security. And every large internet provider, every large corporation uses it as part of their security, uh, part of their security, part of their redundancy, uh, and part of just their general internet operations. And there's no security in it. And, and at this point, uh, you know, the FCC is doing what it can minus any legislation that would enable them to actually do anything important. Uh, they tried to actually take some, some stronger steps. The Republicans on the FCC, uh, shot that down because after all, why would we care about the internet and whether it stays up and whether the Chinese are stealing all their data, it's not terribly important. It's really not important in an election year. So yeah, I'm, I'm not terribly optimistic about that one. Again, I always seem like a pessimist, but at least they're taking some tiny little baby steps, I guess. And finally, uh, the Senate is asking the White House. The White House has this panel to look at federal cybersecurity rules uh, and senators suggesting, well, maybe what you ought to do is figure out how to streamline the rules instead of add even more rules, so, which is what the government loves to do, uh, try streamlining the rules and get rid of the redundancy and making it possible for people to actually follow the rules. Uh, so assuming that happens, and no count, no, I'm not counting on that yet, uh, that would probably be a small win for everybody. So, um, you know, we shall see. Until next time, if you have questions, please contact us and uh, stay safe. Thank you for watching. For more information or to purchase this or any other of our board or executive services, visit us at cybersecurity.com. Call us at 303-887-5864 or email us at rh at cybersecurity.com. Goodbye.